Stop 6. Introduction. The content for this audio tour is provided by the exhibition catalog essay titled Revealing Friends, New Photographs by Tony King, written by Elizabeth Burgess. Tony King is a man with many friends that take countless forms. Whether people, things, objects in nature, or places, Tony respects and admires these friends and takes great joy in recording them on film. Tony maintains an incredibly profound commitment to getting to know each of his friends and will go to great lengths to meet, connect with, and make discoveries about who or what they are. As an artist, he cares not for, quote, how ordinary something may seem on the exterior, but seeks to reveal what he believes are the subject's most extraordinary qualities. This process of meeting and discovery has become a mantra for Tony's existence and the latent qualities of his subjects are the things that fascinate him the most. In this gathering of new work, we are introduced to friends of the artists that he has come to know for varying periods of time, some briefly and some over a lifetime. Stop 7. BA-361, BA-356, BA-377. It is impossible to view this collection without noticing the frequent appearance of the wave, a companion of Tony's that he has continued to investigate throughout a lifelong friendship. Whether at their culmination, crashing abruptly against the rocks, or receding with a few milky pellets of moisture clinging to the sea air, the concept of the ocean cresting at the precipice between sea and land is a subject that continues to fascinate him. When asked why he chose to include so many images of waves in this exhibition, he commented on how the wave is nature's ultimate expression of balance. For Tony, waves are individual and distinct. They represent the overall rhythm of the earth. They also make marvelous sounds. In addition, he finds waves to be full of promise and that no matter how violent a wave may be, someone or something will benefit from what it brings forth from the sea. Tony cites the waves that come as part of a nor'easter storm when seaweed and other ocean plants are ripped from the deep and brought to shore by the waves that pound the coast. The following morning, the beaches are filled with this vegetal debris and seabirds and small marine creatures all benefit from the displacement created by the storm. This instance of nature's exchange of death for life is a perfect example of the balance that Tony finds so captivating about waves and why they have been a favorite subject for him year after year. Stop 8. Modified Shovel, BA-385. At the beginning, BA-383. Objects, too, become friends to Tony and many share stories about their owners and ways people cannot. In some instances, like Modified Shovel, Tony is well acquainted with both the object and its owner. This shovel belongs to Tony's friend, Paul, who Tony simply describes as a man who plants trees. Each year, Paul helps Tony plant a tree that will be used as a hiding place for Tony when he wants to observe and photograph the local wildlife near his home and without being detected. Paul, who Tony describes as a giant man, needed a proper instrument for digging and was unable to find one commercially that suited his needs. As a result, Paul had this shovel crafted for him. It is reinforced, heavy, and strong, and for Tony, an even more accurate portrait of the man who plants trees than a photograph of the man himself. In At the Beginning, Tony made a deeply revealing photograph of an object he came to know only for a matter of seconds. Touring through the conservation labs at the Worcester Art Museum, he came across the palette of Rita Albertson, chief conservationist at the museum. Noting the layers of paint held in each of the wells, Tony immediately felt a connection to the well-worn instrument used by Rita to administer care to the museum's holdings. He was captivated by the colors, the thickness of the paint, the record of time held within each multi-hued compartment. Fascinated, he shot this image in mere seconds and describes the pigments as so voluptuous, like you want to eat them.
Stop 9. At the Edge of Night, BA 342. Seaside Farm, BA 351. The farm, Lodholm Farm in Wells, Maine, was once owned by the Lord family of Kennebunk and is now home to the Wells National Estrang Sanctuary. Tony has admired this site since his youth and has been photographing it since the early 1960s, amassing perhaps hundreds of images of it in all manner of season, weather, and time of day. In At the Edge of Night, Tony chose this place as the destination for a firefly hunting expedition with some of his grandchildren. En route, he stopped to admire the structure as he so often does and was mesmerized again by how beautifully centered the building is on the land. This image, captured at dusk, shows the farmhouse perched on the hillside and surrounded by mature trees. Their inky silhouettes sit motionless against the cerulean sky. A full moon dangles on the edge of the photograph, dazzling in its brilliance and echoing only the lights that remain illuminated in the old house. Seaside Farm is like a companion image to At the Edge of Night. Here, the obscurity of dusk has been replaced by the optimistic radiance of dawn. The yellow house captures the earliest rays of the morning light, giving us a hint of the lush green grasses that surround the site. An overhanging tree has gently crept into Tony's viewfinder, creating a florid border around the familiar composition glowing against the early morning sky. This site is clearly a place that Tony loves, and these photographs are an invitation to the viewer to visit briefly and discover what has drawn the photographer to it for so many years. Stop 10, Lily of the Nile, BA 349, Valentine, BA 388. Of course, some of Tony's dearest friends remain the people in his life, and it is not uncommon for one of these individuals to be photographed in the midst of a movement or activity that gives the viewer the opportunity to see what makes that relationship so meaningful to the artist. Many of these instances are created by, with, or for Tony's dearest friend, Judith Stoddard King, his wife of over 50 years and companion artist in this exhibition. In Lily of the Nile, Tony was returning home after an early morning walk and came around the side of the house to find Judy watering their agapanthus plant. With their funnel-shaped flowers and towering stems, these particular plants have been part of Tony and Judy's family for decades, as they were once part of the garden owned and cared for by Judy's mother. This moment just happened, said Tony, and came to him as a result of just living life in one of his favorite places. In Valentine, Tony photographed a collection of rose petals arranged in the shape of a heart. Earlier, he had given Judy a bunch of roses, and after spending too much time in their vase, the petals dried up, turned dark, and rolled themselves into these funny little shapes, Tony said. After she picked the dried petals from the flowers, Judy arranged them in the form of a heart on their white dining room table. It was the most innocent thing on earth, notes Tony. But the impulse to make a picture of this short-lived moment created by his wife is a powerful representation of perhaps his most important friendship. Throughout Tony's life and work, he has maintained the belief that, quote, you'll be amazed by what you see as special. This practice has allowed him to share the relationships he has developed in a profound way and has permitted the viewers of his work to experience those friendships in a very direct and personal manner. Whether the friendships in question are with individuals or with inanimate objects, the attention and insight that Tony gives to his subjects is reflective of his deep dedication to his friends in all of their forms. <laughs>